Hi everyone, how are you doing? Jay here and I hope you are well. Uh, I've recently been getting a lot of emails and comments on YouTube uh, regarding things like, how can I improve my doubles with my foot technique? How can I balance out my hand technique? Um, my back hurts, you know, what can I do to help that? So, you know, listen, as drummers, we're falling into these little traps. What we're doing is going into our studio to work on, for conversation's sake, a single stroke roll. And we're just sitting there working on the single stroke roll. We're not thinking about our posture. We're not thinking about keeping the hi-hat going on the quarter note just to work on our independence. Little things we can incorporate within one exercise that will help us develop ourselves further. So what we're gonna do right now is take one exercise and we're gonna work on balancing out our hands while incorporating a triplet feel, a triplet exercise, but we're also going to incorporate working on our doubles with our foot. We're gonna do this to the metronome at two tempos, 60 beats per minute and 80 beats per minute, and that is only for demonstration purposes. You might have to do this at 40 beats per minute. Your increments may be two beats per minute per day or per, per week until you get to 50 beats per minute. 60 beats per minute and 80 beats per minute are the tempos I'm using for demonstration purposes. Now for the overall exercise, I would say 80 beats per minute is a good goal tempo to eventually get to for this stage of the game, okay? Um, and the other thing I would say, as far as a duration, I get asked this all the time, how long should I work on the exercise? If you're working on an exercise for two or three minutes, Sure, you're working on the exercise for two or three minutes. There's going to be some development there. But you really need to at least, I would honestly say, give it 10 minutes. Your body's going to warm up over that time. Your muscle memory is going to be better. Your brain and focus is going to be better because you've at least given yourself the time to focus on it. And if you are one of those people who do drift off, at least you've given yourself that 10 minutes, that length of time to like get the exercise going before you do drip off, drift off. But if you can stay focused, 10 minutes is at least a good amount of time. But honestly, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, as long as you really can without making yourself go crazy. And the other thing I want to do with this exercise we're going to do is I don't want you to advance the tempo until you can do it at full relaxation. I want you to be as relaxed as you humanly possibly can before you move on. So one more time to recap what we're going to work on. We're just going to put our left hand on the hi-hat, our right hand on the floor tom. All right, but I want you to keep that good posture. What happens is when we're working on stuff, foot technique or hand technique, a lot of time we get in our cell phone position. We put our heads down like this and we're looking down at what we're doing and right here I'm com compromising the position of my back and my cervical spine, my neck and everything, and that's so bad. So I really want you to keep your chest puffed out, your shoulders back but down, relaxed. You're not forcing yourself, you're just back, and down, relaxed, centered in your seat, but look straight ahead. You know, with your eyes, if you wanna move, or, or minimal movement, that's fine, but really try for development purposes and practice posture to keep your center straight. It's really gonna help your muscles and your nerves and everything to function better, and if everything is functioning better, that means the signals are going back and forth better, and your brain's functioning better. And it's just healthier for you to practice in this position. So when you are relaxed or showing off and stuff, at least you've developed it safely. So one more time, left hand hi-hat, right hand floor tom. So this is gonna be my position. Now, I'm not gonna work in like a German position because that would be very elementary to me, very beginner. So if you are an absolute beginner and you wanna try this lesson, then you really should, that foundation position of German grip. Get the wrist motion. But I wanna get more in that American to almost French hybrid position and as I mentioned we're going to be bringing in our foot and what we're going to do and I'm not no flat foot no molar technique I have like a little double that I do and it's kind of like a, a forward pressure for lack of a better term let's say that the beater is buried into the head if I have that forward pressure and I release off I get that double 
okay? So that's how we're gonna work on it. This is it. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind, when you're in this position, the count, one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet. We're gonna work on this as a 16th note triplet, but don't go one E and like. That's not a triplet. So, balancing out our grip, really giving Good, strong notes at those lower tempos to get that left hand going. Feel the difference between your grip in each hand. Feel where the power is and where the weakness is and the imbalances in your technique. Make sure your shoulders are even and you're sitting right. Both butt cheeks are on there. Your feet are flat down. Well, you're gonna lift this one up a little bit. You're, you just feel good. Make sure you feel good. Look straight ahead and again, it's gonna be. All right, let's put the metronome on and try that. 60 beats per minute first. And what I would also suggest, before you just put the metronome on and go one, two, three, four, listen to the tempo for a little while. Let it internalize and get it so it, you can feel it inside. And if a quarter note tempo at 60 beats per minute is too slow for you, there's too much space between the clicks, Put it on an eighth note subdivision because we are working on a 16th note triplet, so you will be doing six notes between each click, okay? So here we go, 60 beats per minute. When you get comfortable with that, when you really can feel it and you're getting that triplet feel going and it feels like the boxer on the speed bag, you're gonna wanna move up the tempo, but really stay there. I'm, I'm not kidding. Stay there until it is just a part of you. Even when I work at it at those slow tempos, you know, it, it flutters sometimes and that's because we're working at such a slow tempo, it wants to fall apart. So believe it or not, at those low tempos, it's sometimes a lot harder than when it's sped up. So now we're gonna try it at 80 beats per minute. But remember, really keep your posture good. Keep your sticking balance even. No matter what technique you're in, really feel it. Make sure it's even. Make sure your foot technique is going right and you're pivoting on the ball of your foot. I go over that in the Live Loud, Drum Healthy Volume 1 DVD I recently released. Uh, and Volume 2 is gonna be all about foot techniques. But if you want more information on it, check out the DVD. Just visit the MyDrumLife.com site. It's right there on the site. Um, because I really do talk about how we neglect that area of our foot in development and we neglect our foot in overall development. And that was another reason I wanted to do this lesson to incorporate these things. Also to give the foot a little bit of that spotlight position because it's really gonna help along the way, okay? So, 80 beats per minute and I'll talk to you soon, everyone. Thanks so much.